Welcome once again to Product One's YouTube series. Today we are looking at uh, MathCAD. Uh, this is a continuation of what we covered last week, where we showcased uh, pretty much uh, what MathCAD can do at an intro level. So I got an idea of this uh, to showcase this demonstration because of a problem that I started seeing in, in my house. So, in our little terrace, we've got a wooden structure, and this is what I'm having. You can see there that at the bottom, I'm starting to get what we call a negative camber, or the structure is starting to bow. Of course, this being wood, it could be that it needs a stronger beam in the front, or it could be weather, exposed to weather, and so forth. But this is actually very common uh, when you're hanging up a frame or be it a bridge if you're a civil engineer or any structure where you've got a certain span and there's a load in the middle, you're bound to have a, a certain level of bend if it's not properly supported or it's not strong enough. So how do you calculate for something like this inside MathCAD? So let's take this example. The same example that we had. So I'm having here a section uh, representation. So that what you saw there uh, was a simple rectangular uh, wooden structure. So to represent these values here, I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to assign the value, let's say B, and make it 10 centimeters. Obviously, the height being D in this instance, I'm going to make this 15 centimeters. And because I'm going to calculate this using things like your bending moments and so forth, there's certain elements that are critical. And for those who've done mechanics back in the day, you will realize that we need to calculate the I value of this. And if you remember that formula, it's BD cubed. Uh, it's BD cubed over 12. Let me try this again. So it's B multiplied by D, and then cube, all of it divided by, by 12. All right? And now that I've got this, I can say, what is the value of this? So that's what I'm having for my I value. What we need to also uh, think of is from the strength of materials point of view uh, something called modulus of elasticity which in in many occasions is represented by the letter e so i'm going to define that magnitude or that value so that's e we're going to obviously utilize this in our calculation that's why we have to put it so now let's take a scenario so all that we've done now is just define the section if we were to go now and look at the loading of this, so I will have this as my load case. And by the way, this is a very nice example to showcase the power of MathCAD if you were to have an object or a picture that comes from somewhere. So I will pause on this and just show you the power of that. So if you had an object, so let's say you tell method to go and pull up an object so let's take something like uh yes let's take a powerpoint presentation for that matter so immediately when i say powerpoint presentation it opens that powerpoint presentation and anything that i'm doing in this powerpoint presentation it will be uh embedded in method so let's take maybe smart art or yes uh so let's say this could be a process flow diagram or whatever the case is so let's call this one Bob, this one, Rob, and then this one, let's call it Mike. If I happen to close this, inside my math kit, that particular object is now there. If I happen to change or the guy on the other end that's responsible for this diagram and say, look, uh, I don't like that, uh, let's say we call it, a, B, C, 
for whatever reason. Maybe you can even change the color of this or whatever the case is. However, the most important part is that that updates inside your MathCAD. So that's extremely powerful. So let's go back to our object. So in our object, we've got a load case that is defined by W, so we can give it a value, so a magnitude. So let's say it's 500 newtons. We did say that MedCAD is unit sensitive, so let's utilize the power of that. So the span of that beam, let's make it 15. And where the load is acting, let's take it as 11 meters. Now that we've got this, we need to calculate the reaction on the right and the reaction on the left. So I'm not going to go into deeper details in terms of how we work out those equations. If you want, uh, we can share that with you. However, if I were to calculate the reaction A, it will be denoted by this equation. Based on this current loading condition, it will be uh, the force multiplied by the length minus by where the load is acting. And all of this will be divided by, of course, the length. And immediately when I equate that or I evaluate, I get to see the answer. If I were to evaluate the reaction on the B side, the formula will just be the force multiplied by where the force is acting and all of it divided by the length. And I get a value on that. And I can sort of like self-check myself and say, look, is this correct? So how you would always check is in this particular scenario, that reaction and that reaction, when you sum them up, they must give you that value. So that simply put, I can say take the reaction A and add reaction B, all of those, they need to equal this value here. And this is what I have. And that's the beauty of this. So now that I've done all of this, the best thing that I need to do is calculate what we call a shear force and bending moment diagram. And yet again, it's as simple as putting on the equation and MedCAD does the rest. So for shear force, the formula, in fact, let's just put in a text here. So let's say shear force, uh, this is what we have. So the formula for this particular instance is reaction A, which is why we were calculating it. And we're going to say X and A, of course, all of this multiplied by the force. So that's now the shear force. The bending moment or the moment calculation, it's, it's simply like this. So by the way, you can also import these equations from somewhere and I'll show you how. So in this instance, I'm going to say reaction at A multiplied by, let's say, x, and we add, obviously, the range that we want in this particular instance, we multiply this by the force that's acting on this, and we finish off by saying that minus a. So the reason why we do this is that we want to interrogate throughout the span of this what will be the bending moment and because of that we need to equate our variable x so in this particular instance x can be any value from zero and we can give it increments of one right up to the maximum in this instance we know that it's l okay now all that i'm left to do here is to actually draw up my bending moment diagram and my shear force. So I'm going to use an XY plot and simply say this is now my shear force. Of course, I can sort of like clean this up and make it nicer. And in order for me to do the bending moment, of course, I can do these in 
the same sheet, but or in the same graph, but I prefer to have them both like this. So that's what I have now as my bending moment and my shear force. Last but not least, I can calculate what will be the deflection of this beam along that. So for the interest of time, and this equation can be a little bit lengthy, so here's what I'm going to do. So that's the equation now for the deflection, whereby you've got the deflection uh, function. If I were to plot that, it's also going to be an xy plot. And instead of being a bending moment, it will be my deflection. And that's what I have. And by the way, this is in meters, so hence it will show it uh, as completely exaggerated, but you can tell that the values are significantly small. That represents the negative camber that we saw in the beginning. Even though the load case of what I showed you was a, a almost like a uniformly distributed load or UDL, this one was a simple uh, concentrated load. So the big thing with this is MathCAD enables engineers to solve real life problems while documenting them, generating reports. And that's the power of MathCAD. Until next time, goodbye.